In this video, we're going to look at a simple way of incorporating Stripe payment links for subscriptions within our applications. Okay, so uh, the simplest way of incorporating Stripe into your apps is via payment links. It's because they are uh, a no code option. You haven't got to use the API at all, really. And this is the Stripe dashboard. Uh, see, I've got test mode on, just testing this out just to see if I can get it to function in a way that's sort of usable. Um, basically, what you do, you set up your link and you put in your product or whatever you're going to do and then you get a link which is this here which you copy and that's the URL that your users are navigated to when they want to pay for uh, pay for your subscription so this is what we're going to look at and how I've got a demo app and how I've sort of set it up it's a way of doing it it's not the way of doing it uh, there may be other ways of doing it there may be better ways of doing it which I'll continue to explore but in the meantime this is uh, something that I've I've put together and hopefully it's helpful so okay so let's start off in Flutterflow so the idea is our user logs in they are navigated to the subscribe page and that's where they click on the subscribe link which takes them to the Stripe payment link where they pay the subscription and then what's going to happen is this page will automatically update to the subscribe page so just as this example so i've built this um just this sort of test mule app that i use for these types of things and so on the example we've got a sort of handmade truffles um subscription so food subscription seems to be all the rage so uh, we've gone for that so how does it work so on login we start that and we've got custom login actions you can switch off the navigate automatically toggle there and then you can create your own sort of path where you want users to go there's a video on that the uh, link will be on the screen right now so we're logging in and we're forming a custom action and we're checking if somebody is subscribed and if their subscription is still valid which I'll come to in a second and then if they are subscribed they go to the subscriber page which is sort of the if you are subscribed and the default page which is just called dashboard um, and that's the one where you have the subscription link so that's what we're doing there so um, I'll, I'll come back over these actions in a second and then once you are navigated to here so if you are a subscriber it doesn't really do anything obviously it's just uh, a message basically to sort of navigate to actually subscribed in this instance but obviously it's just about demonstrating that the stripe integration you've got a subscribe button and we've got an action on that or several should I say where in first instance we launch the URL and that's the stripe link that we uh, that we looked at right so I did say I'd go over the payment link a little bit better so as you can see we've got a test subscription there that's the one that we're using I'll go to that in a second so on stripe dashboard you click new and you have to add a new project product which can use a test subscription and that's basically really all you have to do you've got some other options here where you can include the trial you can sort of limit number of payments etc etc and you can sort of add some things in here it's all in the docs so you can go over that and then after payment we are currently showing the confirmation page on the one that we have created um, however you don't have to show the confirmation page so if you've got a, a web app you can write redirect to a page on your website which I've actually got on another app that does that that takes you back and you do can do different things with it in terms of identifying the user and their payment credentials and their payment session to match the user with the the payment that's been made so it's a slightly different way of doing it but as this is kind of designed to be a, a sort of a web app really a, sorry a, a more native app then I've just kept the standard confirmation page with thank you for subscribing. You can have custom message. Um, again, for the sake of this, I've just kept it uh, as standard. So we can head back to Flutterflow and have a look at the rest of the action chain and see how that integrates into what we're doing. We have got a periodic action to 
essentially check if the person subscribed so and what that does is every 30 seconds we perform custom action to check if they've subscribed so the reality is what the, what we're what we're trying to do is you've clicked on the payment link it opens a browser window um, so if this is a native app what will happen is it'll open a browser window it'll ask you as you normally does at the bottom of the screen do you want to open it on Chrome or Safari or, or whatever you've got you do that and then you come back to this page once you've paid on the payment link and it will sit there and it will refresh every 30 seconds just while the payments being processed and the database is uploading and then it will uh, navigate you to the subscription page once once that's all gone through so let's look at these actions and what they're doing in in uh, in superbase so back to login right so let's go through this step by step with the actions so we're logging in we've got the custom action subscribed as mentioned we're passing in the user ID and we're turning the we're turning the variable subscribed which is our output and we're just checking that's a that's a true or false and we're just checking if it's that, that's the case is it true or is it false are they subscribed and that is calling the custom action subscribed and it's just a remote procedure call and our super base function we are calling is subscribe check and we're returning a true or false and we're passing in the user ID so on the super base side subscribe check passing the user ID and what we are doing is checking if our user ID equals the user we've passed in and their subscription is current ie their subscription end date is after um, today's date basically and on the table that looks like this we've got our user they are subscribed true and obviously we're checking against user ID and their subscription end date is 12 6 2024 so they're the two values we're checking if that's true and if that is less than if that is greater than uh, today's date and then if they're not either of those things are not the case and it returns false so um, so obviously returning true we're a subscriber we go there returning false we go to the dashboard where we can subscribe that's what's happening on the login and the actions we're using um, neither of those things obviously are related to stripe which is what really this is about so if we go to the dashboard page and this is where it happens so we're launching the stripe url via the stripe link that we've created now the periodic action um, what happens is it'll perform this action every 30 seconds while the page is loaded until we close it so I guess you'd consider this page maybe the checkout page you wouldn't have you wouldn't have um, you know loads of other information on this you'd maybe navigate this as the checkout page so you really want somebody to be on this page so they're going to subscribe not to spend ages of time on your app because otherwise you're making database calls for uh, no reason so it sort of works well in that instance and then we are calling the custom action new subscriber and are they subbed as in as they subscribe true or false is what we get back so we're passing in the email rather than the user id in this instance and i'll explain why in a second because we're using uh, a database wrapper from the stripe tables and then returning i've called it subbed i subscribed true or false and then if it's true stop the periodic action and then navigate to the subscribed page and then if it's false just continue period action until it becomes true basically or the page gets closed um, that's where I've decided to tackle this it's maybe not well it's a way maybe not the best way the best way would be for broadcasting the database via real time and then listening to it in Flutterflow but in this instance for a simple integration this this actually works on sort of what some you'd consider a checkout page so that's what I've done so let's look at that action there 
and it's it's the same as the other one basically we just call in check the customer subscription update and we're passing in the email so none of that again is related to stripe but it's all part of the integration so the exact stuff that we're using to make sure stripe is functioning we have got these two tables which are from stripe basically so we are using and there is a video on this which i'll put the link on the screen we are using wrappers and what that means is um, we have got third-party tables from Stripe within our Superbase tables and we've brought in subscriptions and customers so from there we can then say the customer ID the email address etc and then the subscriber who the customer is who subscribed and they are subscription period so what we're doing is the function we are calling which is the user check and update is this one and say so, as always all this stuff will be able to um, download below I'll put a link so it can all be copied so you can use this uh, if you if you wish so we run it as a security definer because of the way the keys are in the vault um, for the wrapper and then we're declaring some variables that's customer ID are they have got a description yes or no and the end date and we're passing in the email from uh, from from Flutterflow and what we are doing we are getting the user's customer ID from the stripe customers table based on the email address and then we are checking that against the subscriptions table where the customer ID and the current period end is after the current date ie are they subscribed so that's what we're doing next so does this customer exist yes do they have a valid subscription yes and then that section there is determining if that person is a subscriber true or false which is has subscription and then if they have a subscription we are then re-retrieving the current period end in subscription end date from that customer ID and then within our public users table should though all those things be true we are set inscription to true and description end date in the public users table where the email equals the user's email and then we're returning our subscription because then ie the true or false which is we're doing on this section um, because that's what we're using to navigate the page and the reason we're writing them into the users table as well is because that's what we're using on login we're going to the public users table to find out if our user is subscribed and their subscription is valid on the login but on the once they've paid we are checking the subscription and the customer tables from stripe to make sure that a they're subscribed and b it's current and then that's what we're passing back so as soon as those values turn true in the table so basically as soon as these things appear in the table and after you've paid on your stripe checkout page as soon as these things appear and this appears and everything aligns this information will be placed in here and in turn On the next iteration of the periodic action our sub will return as true so it will return as false false and while well, you're paying basically so you're on this page you navigate away from it to the checkout page for stripe and then once you've completed your action the next iteration through of the periodic action will return true obviously because all those things will now align and that's when you get navigated to the next page so that's the way I have tackled this uh, particular problem. Um, so what I'll do now, I will remove those subscriptions that are currently sitting in the table and I'll reset it up and I'll, uh, I'll show you it functioning. So I'm back in Superbase and as you can see our subscriptions and our customers tables are both empty. 
and I have reset description to false and then that doesn't really matter that will um, update anyway it'll overwrite it so we'll wait for the app to load and then we'll pay the bill and um, we'll go from there right so we're on our subscription page so if I click here this is the payment link that will take us to stripe so I'll complete the information and um, click subscribe so I fill that in and uh, what you get with Stripe in test mode, uh, you get some test card details which are quite handy to use obviously to make things testing. So let's click subscribe. And then thanks for subscribing, thanks for subscribing, payment complete. So if we go back to our test mode app, what happens now we just sit and wait on the 30 seconds it will um, update itself and there we go so that's how uh, that's how I've tackled that particular problem to incorporate it so we get an automatic update when the when the users has subscribed so yeah hopefully that's useful it's the simplest way of incorporating stripe there are probably better ways um, it's not the only way obviously but in because you can use the API and all that kind of thing but in terms of using payment links which is the very simplest way of using Stripe you do get a kind of limited ways you can interpret the information that's coming back without using the API so subscriptions it works well because you get the email address and as long as the email address is matched which you have to explain to your customers you need to use the same email address but once that's if that as long as they do that this can be incorporated uh, as simply as that basically so like I say, hopefully that helps. And if it did, please consider like, subscribe, and I will uh, speak to you in the next video.